Hello, and welcome to another episode of the SIRS Group Podcast. I am Barbara. And I'm JC. And yes, my hair is different. Today, we are doing the final phase of the Shoemaker Protocol. It's been an exciting ride through all of the phases. I'm glad that we did this little series. Yes, it's been an exciting ride. I'm excited for this phase specifically because this is the one, you know, it's the last phase. It's the one where you start feeling these incredible gains in how you feel, or at least that was my experience. We'll talk about it more. But I think this is the the phase everyone, when you think about the surge protocol, it's the phase that everyone cares about, right? It's the, the end stage, the end game. We did say almost that exact thing about the binders phase as well, which is also just as important and exciting. I think that one's exciting because it's like, ooh, it's like you're on the roller coaster and it's that click, 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 click part that the Mm -hmm. like for some people that induces anxiety for for others, you get to the top and you're like, yay, the fun part's about to happen. That's how I feel the binders are. And then maybe this part is like the last final exhilarating loop or something of that same roller coaster, if I'm going to continue with this metaphor. Uh, But yes, it's a very, it is a very exciting, you're in the home stretch. Everything you do is making you feel better, like every single thing. And as time goes by, you continue to feel better. And you, and, and I've heard you say this, JC, you're like, I'm at a hundred percent. And like next week you still feel better than you did the week before. And it's like, well, apparently I wasn't at a hundred percent. This is friggin' awesome. So I'm excited. I'm excited for you that you are in this phase and that you are in that home stretch and that you have had such a great experience with it. It certainly gives people like me hope who are not quite there yet. They're like, and we can be like, yes, I'm almost there. So Absolutely. So this phase, phase four is repair and restoration. And so it's really just focused on fixing the last few blood markers. And then the final, final step being the VIP spray, which is the really cool thing that turns off a lot of the genes that were errantly turned on by the chronic inflammation. It's the part that really resolves the issues and it reduces the ongoing impact. Um, because it fixes all of those things that need fixing. At this point, you're going to be more resilient moving forward. Is it phase five? Is it? Foundation, no, diagnosis, foundation, detox. Metabolic repair. Yeah. And then repair and restoration. I can't count. For those of you keeping count at home. So the first step on this phase is correcting MMP9. So MMP9, if we remember from when we were talking about diagnosis and blood work, it's one of those blood markers that is very important for your actual SIRS diagnosis. Um, And to correct MMP9, you eat a low amylose diet. So amylose is the starch that's found in root vegetables like potatoes, Um, (laughs) I just gave myself a like Lord of the Rings tingle right there. <laughs> I gave me one too. I was like potatoes. I didn't even do it on purpose, but boil and mash and put them in a stew. Like it has to happen. Okay. It does. It does. So low amylose diet, uh, for anyone who's new to Barbara and I, we follow a carnivore diet have for quite a while now. Um, so the part of the reason we eat the way that we do is because we don't want this like crazy Venn diagram of like, you need to eat low amylose and low mold and low inflammation. And you can only eat things that are in the trifecta of the three. We eat a carnivore diet because it makes it a lot easier. But um, this is another one of those things. That's another good example of the Gantt chart we've been talking about throughout all these phases of you can eat a low amylose diet throughout (laughs) your SIRS treatment. And then when you get to this step, this may already be corrected by the time you get here. And so when you do get to this final portion of the SIRS protocol, you will want to retest because a lot of these things might actually be corrected throughout the protocol. And it's just you're retesting to see if there's any residual issues that need to be tidied up before you move forward. Exactly. And I also want to take a moment to acknowledge the fact that, uh, as much as this marriage between SIRS and carnivore is so beautiful and so magical and makes a ton of sense, um, I think that also we can remember if we're not perfect in our carnivore-ishness or, or our low amyloseness, that lots of people have healed even without the strictness of 
like lion diet, for example. Um, and, and, so anyway, the carnivore gives you a fantastic foundation. And obviously in this situation, uh, it actually helps correct a blood marker of inflammation in your body. And that's how powerful carnivore is or low amylose, if you want to have some leeway there. Um, the big difference with low amylose, by the way, in carnivore is like you can eat some fruit, I think, besides bananas um, and uh, what I mean, some corn. I think corn's OK. I remember again, seeing corn on the list. Yeah, there's a couple like, and again, there's so many little things to like dig through. Like, oh, can I have this, but not that and this over here? Like, I, I don't know. That's why we're just carnivore. It's just easier. The next thing you're going to correct is complement activity. So these are known as C3A and C4A. And these are corrected through fish oil supplementation, which if, again, you've been listening to all the phases, this was part of the foundational phase. We started doing lipid replacement all the way back in step one. And then there's also some anti-inflammatory supplements like resveratrol. I'm always going to be bad at saying that, curcumin, stuff like that that you can take that will also help lower those. So this is cool, right? Because it's like, once again, we're treating SIRS without having to take a ton of medications. It's really just supporting your body and what it already wants to do, which is heal, and then just getting out of your own way. And then the last step before VIP spray is correcting TGF beta 1. And this can be done either through a blood pressure medication called Losartan um, or L-carnitine and bilberry slash resveratrol. Um, the really interesting thing I wanted to point out here is that I, when I was researching for this episode, I went back and listened to some of Heyman, Andrew Heyman's lectures about the SERS protocol. I'm a bit of a fangirl, but I have become a little bit frustrated with his practice recently because he says low amylose and take L-carnitine, which is an essential amino acid only available through meat. But then he has one of his practitioners is telling people to eat like plant-based and it's like, okay, so L-carnitine is good for me, but I can't get it through a natural source. And it's just another one of those things you want to consider when you are talking to your providers, like knowing what feels right for you and knowing what feels true for you and your treatment and advocating for yourself. If my provider told me I needed to be plant-based, I would be like, absolutely not. But it's because I have the education and the resources behind me to feel confident saying that. Right. And it's, it is totally okay to consider seeing a different practitioner if you've already started with one. I know we've, I think we've covered that in other episodes, but it's a good time to remind you if there's something that like, nah, that didn't feel good. I really disagree with that thing. Listen to your gut and you can always call another practitioner, talk to them. Doesn't mean you have to make the switch. You can just kind of start that process. But if that comes up for you, um, it's always good to get, uh, get a second opinion. If you're ever like concerned about anything, any part of your protocol, um, yes, that costs money, but sometimes it's good to just kind of get that, just another, another opinion to either validate your concerns or say, reassure you that you're on the right path. Absolutely. And again, I'm a very big fan of Heyman. I'm not trying to like talk down on him. I just wish that his practice was a little more open to the different ways people have found helpful for them in their healing. Absolutely. Yep. So once your TGF beta one is corrected, you get to go to the exciting step, which is VIP spray. VIP stands for vasoactive intestinal peptide. It is a natural hormone produced by the human body, but it is low in people that have SIRS. And so the last stage is for four to six months, you will supplement VIP spray and then you taper off the VIP spray. Again, it corrects those errant genes that were turned on by chronic inflammation. So if you take the genie, which is this helpful blood test you can take at the start of treatment and at the end of treatment, you can actually see all of those genes turn off through the VIP spray. VIP will also help with some of the brain atrophy that happens with SIRS. Um, so if you take a neuroquant, which is the um, MRI that you can take, it measures the volume of structures in the brain. You can take it at the beginning of treatment and at the end of treatment, and you can actually see those, those volumes recover after taking the VIP spray. So awesome. It's like such a great thing that it exists 
that the damage that SIRS causes may not be permanent. It's a lot of fun, you know, hope in the reversal of uh, what's gone on in your body chronically, I'm sure, because most of us do not realize it's SIRS until many years have passed. So VIP is magic. It is. And just to speak a little bit to my own experience of VIP, um, I had a provider tell me that people have two different experiences with VIP. Either when you take it, you're like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. Um, and the reason it feels amazing is because for a lot of us, uh, we have some sort of like pulmonary involvement in our SIRS. And so it actually helps us breathe better. I would jokingly went around for a little while, like this is the best thing I've ever snorted. I am addicted. This is brilliant. Um, over time that, that, elation kind of diminished. But when I started taking VIP, it was this moment of, I had been on the binders for about six months. I was feeling really good. If you had asked me, I would have said I was like 90%. And I wasn't sure how much VIP would actually do for me. I had some lingering knee pain, which I thought I would have to treat after my SIRS protocol. And then when I started the VIP spray, it was this weird thing of a, like, I would be walking up the stairs and all of a sudden I would think I feel normal. <laughs> and it was like, I had achieved a hundred percent. But like you said, if you asked me the next week, I would be like, I feel even better. So at this point I've been on VIP spray for four months and I have have complete symptom reversal. If I hit a moment of higher inflammation, whether it be from stress or eating something off carnivore or, uh, Recently, their quality has been bad, so environmental factors. Um, I will get a return of joint pain, um, but it quickly resolves. So again, VIP is typically done for four to six months. I expect I have a few more months to do a VIP spray, but I don't know. It's kind of magical. Um, but you should talk about your experience too, because you had kind of a different journey than I did. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, so the other type, the other way you may experience VIP is, um, I guess there's probably three ways. There's my way, which is it did absolutely nothing. Um, and then I think some people may actually get a bad reaction from VIP spray. Um, I did not experience that way, but it did nothing. I started kind of slow. I thought this is dumb. Doctor, give me the full dose. So I did still nothing. Turns out, I still had a crap ton of Marcons. And if you remember from a previous video, that was in a previous phase, meaning it should have been cleared and I should have retested to ensure that it was cleared. That was not done. So um, yes, I think that my experience probably would have been a little bit closer to JC's had I had cleared Marcons uh, when I needed to. So I am back to the phase of um, or the step of clearing Marcons now as we record this and we'll hopefully have a much better experience with VIP when I get to it in the right order. And my provider also shared that some people don't notice a benefit from VIP, but if you were to ask their spouse or their partner, or someone they're close to later, they'd be like, oh my gosh, they're a different person. Mm -hmm. um, and I think this really speaks to tracking your symptoms throughout your SIRS treatment. It's going to make things a lot easier. I know it's tedious. I know, especially at the beginning stages of treatment, it's like my brain can't handle this right now, but it's going to give you much better data to see how you're doing over time. In our group, we have a symptom tracker, so you can go ahead and score your symptoms every day at the same time every day, and then you can see that progress over time. Beautiful. Yes. And yes, we do have a group. If you couldn't tell by the name, it's the SIRS group, and you can go over to thesirsgroup.com to check that out and to join us there for those resources and also a really awesome community. Yes. And uh, the really cool thing in the context of this phase specifically about our group is that we have people who have completed phase five and they're kind of the ones who are the leaders in the community. They're reaching back to help the people up who are coming after them. You know, we're not on this journey alone or we don't have to be on this journey alone. And I think that's really the power of support groups in general. Um, but it's so cool to see the people who have kind of walked ahead and see how well they're doing. And it's inspiring and it gives you hope. Um, so if you are looking for, like Barbara said, a support community, you can join us over at thesearchgroup.com. It is kind of an interesting phenomenon that's happening with the people who have been through it. I want to say like everybody who's gone through treatment successfully, we're the weirdos that did this before we went through treatment, but mo everyone else who's been all the way to the end 
is like turning around and 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 with the with their hands and like pulling other people up and like here this is the way um but i mean we have so many people that are another member that just uh qualified to be a proficiency partner we have uh someone else who's coaching like we have all these people within the group that is they are now turning to SIRS treatment as maybe a new profession, new, a new job or business that gives them purpose and, and makes them happy because they get to help other people with their own experience and knowledge in having gone through it themselves. So it's, it's weird. It's only weird in that, like, it's almost like we all feel this duty to help other people once we understand it and get through it. Um, and I, I don't know how many, maybe other really serious chronic illnesses are the same. And I just haven't seen it firsthand myself, but I just think that it's a really special, cool thing uh, that's happening, at least within the SERS community for sure. 100%. So if you are interested in more resources, support, you can join us over at thesersgroup.com. See you there. <laughs>